Good afternoon. Welcome to my sailboat. Uh, this sailboat is a 21 foot Sharpie, uh, 900 pound boat. And I'm going to talk a little bit about how I navigate this boat, uh, specifically uh, how I navigate it with a cell phone and more importantly, why I navigate it with a cell phone. So uh, like I said, the boat's uh, 900 pounds, 21 feet. It has no keel. It's not a, it's not a dinghy but it's not a keel boat either. It's somewhere somewhere in the middle. It's a Cuddy Cabin Sharpie or Cuddy Cabin Dinghy. Um, so at any rate, this boat has no fixed 12 volt electrical system. So uh, I'm not able to hardwire in any kind of electronics at all. I don't want to install uh, a 12 volt system. Uh, I don't have any charging capability for one thing aside from a small bit of solar I've got 20 watts of solar um, and then I, I don't have an outboard with charging capability either so uh, basically I'm very limited limited in what electrical power I have available to me all right so no hardwired electronics uh, but um, I do have uh, a cell phone and uh, why uh, I've chosen to go with a cell phone is I, I'm going to talk about a few of those points here. Now, first of all, cell phone is not my only uh, piece of navigation equipment. I have a GPS map 64 um, CSX. Okay, but I should point out this is my backup. This is not my primary uh, chart plotter uh, because it's, um, I, for one thing, I only have the world base map The Garmin maps are really expensive, uh, and uh, it's just it's the cell phone. Uh, well, look at the size of the screens. The uh, small uh, Garmin chart plotter versus the uh, cell phone. The cell phone's a lot bigger. Okay, so I do have that, and the other thing I have in my local water, which is the Rideau Canal, I have the paper charts. Okay. So these are on board. They don't take up much space. Uh, I also sail uh, a lot in the Thousand Islands. So I have paper charts for the Thousand Islands when I'm not sailing either in my home waters. So Thousand Islands or um, the uh, Rideau Canal. I make my own charts, uh, usually from an NOAA uh downloadable vector chart and then I, I print it out and laminate it and I'll make my own chart book. And in addition to the backup uh, GPS and the paper charts, I also have a marine VHF. Uh, you know, you'll notice this is not a hardwired unit. This is my standard horizon HX280S. I've had this uh, radio for a lot of years. And it's, it's never let me down. I think I'm probably going on seven or eight years with this radio. And it just, it always works. It's good for weather reports. It, it does what I need it to do. Uh, so again, no no hard, hardwired electronics on this boat. So I don't have a um, fixed VHF radio. Okay, so back to the uh, cell phone for navigation. Like I mentioned, it's got a bigger screen uh, than the... Uh, Garmin that I have, so it's easier for me to read. It's a higher resolution screen, and uh, it's a lot less expensive. I mean, you own, or I already own a cell phone, so I don't need to go out and buy really anything at all. This is something that I already have, and that's why I use a cell phone. And by the way, this is the second cell phone that I've used to navigate with. I'm going on probably about six years where I've been using a cell phone chart plotter. My first one was, was with uh, X. Sonum, uh, and uh, it, it was great until you know it stopped working, and then I switched to this Samsung S8, uh, and it's in a life proof case, so it's waterproof. Um, and then the waterproof issue has been discussed, and then the power issue. So, as you can see, my phone is plugged in right now. So, I, I should note when it's plugged in like that, it's not waterproof. Okay, so to waterproof it, the cap has to go on. Okay, and now it's not waterproof, but it is charging. Now, I'm inside my cabin. This is uh, the driest sailboat I've ever had. You know, I've owned big boats, 30, 35 feet, but this is uh, this little 21 footer. It's just it's dry. There's no there's no leaks. There's no drips. There's no condensation around the portals. It's uh, 
it's it's really dry so anything inside is not going to get wet it's you know it's like being in a house almost so at any rate charging cable goes out to a um solar um battery pack that's on uh on deck on top of the coach house so it's charging so it's getting uh solar charging and plus it's a 20,000 milliamp hour battery pack okay so that is a 20,000 milliamp uh, battery pack. So that will fully charge my Samsung phone three times. And then it's got its own built-in uh, solar panel. It's not much. It's a couple of watts, the solar panel. Uh, but uh, like I said, that's three charges. Um, so I'm looking at, uh, you know, several days of, uh, of navigation before this solar panel doesn't keep up with charging the phone anymore. But I, I can go several days like this, which is pretty good. Now, I do also have a 20-watt solar panel that I can hook up to this. Right, so battery power. Internal battery, 20,000 milliamp uh, external power pack with 2 watts of solar. And I can connect an extra 20 watts of solar. So that's uh, lots of power. So uh, software, so right now what you're looking at is you're looking at Plan to Nav. Uh, Plan to Nav has been my uh, chart plotter software I've been using for about six years. It was super affordable when I got it um, and it was available on uh, uh, for Android when I got it. Uh, at the time that I first got it, not everything was available on Android. Uh, some uh, systems only worked with uh, iPhones. So at any rate, this was available, it was cheap. I got like all of Canada and uh, or Eastern Canada and the Northeastern US for $13 for life. So um, so that's what I still use. I do sometimes use another program called Navionics. That's a annual subscription. It's about $30 uh, a year. Uh, I use that if I'm doing more complex navigation, but for just basic around home stuff, Thousand Islands, Rideau Canal, then I use uh, Plan to Nav. And then, so some years I play, pay for the Navionics subscription, some years I don't. This year I don't have the Navionics subscription. I let it expire just a few months ago. I was down in Florida earlier in the year and I was using Navionics there. So my main go-to is Plan to Nav. Uh, the app was free and the charts uh, were $13 for the area that I use. Uh, tablets. So I know tablets are a popular option for uh, navigation and they're great. Uh, I, I use a cell phone for, for a couple of reasons. Instead of a tablet, one, I already own the cell phone. And the other is it uses less battery. Uh, so it fits in my pocket. I have it with me anyway. So for me, the cell phone works. Some people like the bigger display. Nothing wrong with the tablet. But for me, I'm happy with a cell phone. Okay, so just to summarize then. So uh, cell phone, uh, this one happens to be a Samsung S8 in a uh, life-proof case. It's waterproof. Um, so, uh, you sometimes hear the argument that you can't use the, uh, touch screen that well when it's wet. Well, yeah, that's true. But, uh, you know, you can't use paper charts when they're soaking wet. And, uh, you know, a lot of, uh, even high end, uh, chart plotters will suffer some kind of water intrusion. So, and you can always go, you know, go with somewhere dry to use it. I've got a bimini on this boat. Um, and I've also got a cabin, so it doesn't, it doesn't cause me stress. Uh, so uh, Samsung phone, a Android operating system, life proof case, uh, charging is through a 20,000 milliamp hour battery pack and uh, it's got its own internal solar system and I can back that up with an extra 20 watts of solar. And software, personally, I'm using Plan to Nav. Uh, Navionics is another good option as well. Uh, thank you, that's why I use a cell phone chart plotter on my sailboat. Thanks. Bye.